Hello, my name is Emily Faulkner and I am a Camden Works intern as well as a curator of this Aurelia uh, Medical History exhibit. I am a graduate of the Georgian College um, course in Museum and Gallery Studies as well as I have my Bachelor's of Honor Science in Forensics and Anthropology. I decided to take my love of science as well as my love of history and uh, use almost permanent collection to put together this exhibit. Today we're going to give you a little bit of a walk through um, of the items uh, that might be of interest. We're going to start over here where we have a wooden wheelchair um, which was used between the years of 1900 to 1950. Okay. Uh, this specific wheelchair was used um, in the Aurelia Soldiers Memorial Hospital. <laughs> which we have a timeline for here uh, that spans over 100 years. The Aurelia Soldiers Memorial Hospital opened in 1907 as a 10 room house, which was purchased on the Neaton Street uh, for, for $3,750, which was a lot of money at the time. Uh, some renovations, and obviously many renovations throughout the years, uh, it has become the building we know today, and is still on the same plot of land. One of the interesting things is that in 1910, the uh, hospital opened a nursing school, which we have more information about over here. The Aurelia School of Nursing, um, which as I mentioned, um, ran until 1974 where about 700 uh, nurses graduated. These nurses uh, were involved in practices within the hospital that they gained their education working um, on the wards. Down here we have many um, nursing items, um, including uh, basins, which were used to soak bandages, as well as collect medical waste. And we have a nursing cap here, which was part of the nurse's uniform. The black stripe on the hat signifies that this individual was uh, a graduated registered nurse, whereas um, people who wore the white stripe without the white stripe uh, were training. We have a picture here, um, which has Marion uh, Mini Harvey, as she was known. Um, as well as a bunch of people who were in training. I graduated the School of Nursing in 1915 and became one of the instructors at the school. An interesting thing is, is over in this cabinet, down here we have uh, Marion's bag. Uh, that she carried with her. This bag is from approximately 1920 and we have her initials on the front. As well as in this cabinet of medical items, uh, we have various um, treatments as well as these two mercury-based antiseptics, uh, one being Miracrome. Uh, these were used as a which is surgical equipment. And on this side of our cabinet here, we have a metal insert uh, with various different types of medication, um, including a vial of morphine. Um, this was able to be carried in a doctor's bag um, for easy access. And we have a bottle of um, uh, Kino compound is what it was known as. Um, the Kino compound was used to treat dysentery, cholera, morbus, and all summer complaints is what they advertise it as. The bottle even includes um, instructions on to how to take it depending on age. And this leads us to uh, an exhibit that we have over here, uh, which talks about our uh, pharmacies within Aurelia. And we have them both druggists as well as pharmacists. Um, the lab setup that we did here is 
kind of give you a view as to the map. Um, we have a little tapered beaker over here, which was able to measure in both ounces and drams. Drams was a old form of weight, which equals at 0 0.025 ounces, which is a bit interesting. We also have a large uh, rounded flask over here uh, with a glass stopper, which could be used to hold um, you know, chemicals and uh, for mixing. <laughs> we have a prescription uh, over here on Gladen's drugs, um, which, uh, which advises the user to rub the medication on their side as directed. The interesting thing about having this um, from Gladen's drugs is we have a picture of Slaven in his storefront with one of his associates. Um, at his drugstore. So it was interesting to see how it was set up with everything in cabinets. Um, we will go over to this glass cabinet here. We have a whole uh, for different medical purposes. The interesting thing is, is that many of these uh, I just came fresh from a local doctor here in Aurelia. Um, fortunately, he passed away in 1980. But um, the I from Trevor McLennan. <laughs> so a bit more about uh, Dr. Trevor McLennan. Uh, he was a graduate from Queen's University in 1932 um, and went on to work at a doctor's office. Uh, on Peter Street, uh, just beside the fire hall. Uh, he then became a part of the Royal Canadian Volunteer Reserves uh, at the start of World War II, where he went on to put as a degree, which he received um, after the war and went the Hustle's Radiology Department and he became the head of that radiology department. Um, an interesting thing is with his uniform that we have here, this was one of his uniforms he wore during the war. Um, on his sleeves, we have the medical insignia that uh, identified him as part of the medical team. Uh, we also have his doctor's bag, one of his doctor's bag here. The other one that you saw in the cabinet was also his. Uh, but this was his primarily used one. This one has the insert in the bottom that I was talking about where that metal comes. I'm going to throw the floor to my, <laughs> my co-worker Tanya, um, who did this exhibit about Harry Hall, who actually knew uh, Trouble McClendon. Thank you, Emily. Hi, everybody. My name is Tanya Cunnington. I am the Arts Programming Coordinator at the Aurelia Museum of Art and History, and I'm also the curator of Views from a Canoe by Harry Hall, which is the photography exhibition you see behind me right now. Uh, many of you may know Harry Hall. He is a retired family doctor. So we thought that Harry's exhibition would pair really nicely with the history of medicine in Aurelia and the Maze exhibition. Um, when he is not, a family doctor, Harry has two passions, which is photography and canoeing. So this exhibition focuses on a more local exhibition. These photographs are taken in and around the Aurelia area. But I have to be honest, I think Harry gave me over a hundred photographs for me to select from for this exhibition. He is a very fascinating man. When he wasn't uh, working in Aurelia, he was a locum's tenens physician, which means that he traveled all over the world, going into small communities that were in need of a doctor and spending a couple days or a week there. So you can only imagine the photographs that he has. So what you see here is available on our wall, but the photographs that are on site are in our Oma shop. Um, so there's many in there for you to see. Um, as well as his book, he is a published author, The Tales of Dr. Harry. So to accompany this exhibition, I'm actually, I did a little um, interview there, and I did a small film 
to Bombay to see a couple more of his images and learn a little bit more about the man Harry Hall. This exhibition runs until the end of June. Back to you, and Emily. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, um, Tanya. It's interesting, and I, and I like having that connection um, with the uh, local retired doctor in the medical exhibit. Um, it gives you more than just you know, items from uh, a collection. As I would like to open the floor, if anyone has any questions, um, I can answer those here. What's your favorite part of the exhibit? I would have to say a part of my exhibit is the um, medical cabinet we have with the various uh, bottles of uh, medicine. Um, it's interesting to see how, um, you know, past treat like illnesses, um, especially knowing that we use mercury as an antiseptic, when nowadays we know how dangerous mercury is supposed to be. Waiting to see if we get any other questions. So the question is, hi Emily, why did doctors wear white coats? Something I've always wondered. So the interesting thing is that uh, doctors actually, uh, they didn't always wear white and they actually wear black um, because black was uh, Seen as like a somber, serious color, it also um, hid the stains that were common in the profession um, and uh, commonly associated with death. Unfortunately, we wanted, uh, you know, we wanted uh, health care to be a good thing. Um, so when they changed in the late 19th century, uh, it was a more white, kind of clean, pristine look to be um, um, more friendly, as well as white, and therefore shows the stains knowing so that they know when to change um, to stop the spread of uh, germs. Tanya, what was your favorite part of curating Dr. Hall's photos? Um, getting to know Harry, he is the most delightful man. Uh, he wasn't my family doctor, but he was apparently in the same building as my family doctor on O'Brien Street for years. And I, this is the first time I met him, but I heard great stories about them. And he is a delight. I could sit there and talk with him for hours and hours and hours. Not only that, but to I mean, he saw some incredible photographs, one that we didn't get to include because he wasn't paddling in a canoe at the time, but it was um, an iceberg in Antarctica, and it was just a boat, so it's almost like it's a ghost boat. And you can see like, the salt on it, the bow on the deck, it's just a beautiful photograph. So just getting to know he and his wife, Marion, and going through all the photographs of places I might never get to see has been such a pleasure. Awesome. And we have a couple more questions for Emily. So one of them is, wondering what the teardrop-shaped item in this cabinet is. I believe they might mean this one? Yes. So that item, um, actually it's an anesthesia mask. Um, so they uh, were commonly uh, metal uh, with a fabric kind of filter over top of it. The teardrop shape is designed so that it could be easily held to a person's mouth. Um, the interesting thing is uh, the first anesthesia um, was done in like 1846, I believe, um, and oh, 1846, my bad, and uh, it was actually using uh, sulfuric ether. Uh, since then, um, we've obviously changed what we use for anesthesia, and this mask um, was used primarily in the 1940s. Awesome. And the next question is, why the skull? <laughs> Well, this uh, this uh, skull here actually is from a cast um, skeleton that I used to my early I had to you know learn all the different bones, um, and I decided to include it in the medical uh, exhibit because it actually um, the study of cadavers became very popular in the 1800s, as well as the study of the human cranium was to justify certain treatments in medicine. If, uh, 
that's something we have today. Thank you for coming to the live stream, as well as uh, we want to invite you to come and visit the exhibit in person uh, here at Oh, we actually got one. Oh, we got another question. I'm so sorry. When did doctors stop the patients and going to the doctors? Okay. Well, actually, that's a very interesting thing. Actually, if, if we don't mind, Becca, we're going to go over to here. We have <coughs> we have a handbill uh, on display, um, which is a little hard to read because the text font on it is small, uh, but it's from 1888. Uh, where they were actually advertising a Red Cross hospital, um, which was going to be the first hospital open in Aurelia. They ran for three years. Uh, they charged five dollars per patient, but at this time, um, you know, doc, uh, patients still preferred to get treatment at home. Um, actually, and even into the 1940s, it was still a common thing where about 60 percent of healthcare was carried in the home. Um, but one interesting thing is, is that only 15 years later, uh, after this, uh, opening of the park, to the 1960s is where we start to see the shift of actual people going to hospitals. But we saw the change in that 15 years from an unsuccessful hospital to a very successful hospital. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank you very much again for coming uh, to the live stream and, and please, please do visit us. Um, we will be opening um, other exhibits as well as we have a fun little tableau in our front um, lobby right now um, to uh, come see. So, noon to three, I don't know. <laughs>